Hello viewers, today I am going to show you how to fix a posterior malleolus in a buttress mode using a posterolateral approach uh, to an ankle. I have already uploaded a, a, a video in which I have demonstrated how to do a posterolateral approach. Uh, for finer details, you can watch that video. This video is more about uh, how to fix uh, the posterior malleolus uh, using one third tubular plate in a buttress mode. So, I will take you step by step as how to do this approach properly. So, our lady today is a 35 year old lady who has got a twisting injury to her right ankle and you can see that she has got pronation type injury. Uh, the injury is above the ankle uh, syndesmosis and there is a associated medial malleolus fracture and there is a posterior malleolus uh, fragment uh, which you can just about appreciate it on AP as well as lateral. So, I am going to uh, take you uh, through an approach as how to do a posterolateral approach and how to fix the posterior malleolus uh, in a buttress mode. So, this is our uh, theta setup. Our uh, patient is um, lying lateral. Now, if you are doing posterolateral approach, there are only two ways to do it. One is to take the patient lateral and one is to do it prone. Um, I would suggest that try to do lateral. There are several advantages uh, when you are doing lateral. First is that it gives you a straight access. So, the access is very easy. Secondly, if you are taking intraop fluoroscopy, uh, life is much easier, especially if you are looking for a mortis view. All you need to do is lift the leg up and you will be able to get a mortis view. If the patient is prone, it is a hassle to get a mortis view. Also, um, when you are done with your lateral side and the posterior side, so if you have fixed your um, fibula, you have fixed your posterior malleolus, you need to fix the medial malleolus in a trimalleolar fracture. And in that case, is, lateral has got advantage that all you need to do is to take the support off and the patient will be supine and then you can fix the medial side. Or even if not, even in this position, if you, even if you do not want to take it, um, make the patient supine, you will still have reasonable access by just rotating the hip. Can you see it? It is just in this position. So, it is entirely up to you. If you are struggling, take the, take the support off, make the patient supine. Otherwise, even in this position, you can safely fix a medial malleolus. If you are doing it prone, to fix a medial malleolus is next to impossible. So, all you need to do, you either have to flip it or most times, you have to repaint and redrape it. So, this is my position, the tunique will be on, we will use tunique. Our C arm will be coming from the front, our C arm screen will be on again in the front so that I have got unimpeded access, my trolley will be uh, on my right hand side. So, the next step will be skin marking and marking of our skin incision. So, now I have done some skin marking, this is uh, our uh, fibula. Now, fracture is somewhere across here. This is our tender glyphs. This is the lateral border. The other border is on the other side. I have just roughly marked um, the sural nerve. It will be in our field. Now, classically, if you read the books, they will describe go halfway between this and this. Now, you can go halfway uh, but I try to be slightly more closer to the fibula and the reason is it just makes your life so much easier when you are applying the plate onto the fibula. Otherwise, if you are too posterior, then you have to lift a lot of soft tissue in order to expose the fibula. So, if you are closer to the fibula, there is no real, real harm but the advantage is you encounter less soft tissue and applying plate becomes so much easier. Also, if you are anterior, there is a very good chance that you may not encounter um, your sural uh, nerve uh, in your field. So, the nerve becomes uh, more protected if you go slightly anterior. So, instead of being in the center, I will be slightly anterior. So, this will be my skin incision. However, as I said, you can choose to be in between or bang in the center. But uh, if you want to listen to me, be slightly closer to the fibula so that you are not struggling when you are applying the plate.
So now, as you know, in India, nothing comes easy. So this is also at least two to three weeks old. Uh, this whole fracture was covered with granulation tissue. So I've just taken that granulation tissue away. And now if I just give it a uh, just a wipe, you can see the fracture line. Now, if it's a fresh fracture, the reduction is very easy. Now, the order of, what is the correct order of fixation? I think you should fix the fibula first and then do this, posterior malleolus. Um, what happens is once you gain the length, fixation becomes of very easy. However, I am making this video, so let me see if I can get it reduced properly without fixing fibula, then that would be great. Otherwise, I will fix the fibula and then I will join you. So this is the fracture site. I can see I have mobilized it. Now I am just going to use something like a reduction uh, tool to just compress it and see if I am able to reduce it. And once it is reduced, uh, if it is reduced, then you have two options. The first option is you can directly reduce it by a plate or the second option is fix the uh, posterior malleolus with a lag screw and then put a plate on top and some surgeons can choose to do that as well. But I always try to fix it with, an, uh, with a plate and try to reduce it with a plate. So after taking away the granulation tissue, I have just taken a clamp from a large fragment and I twisted it and then I am holding and trying to reduce the fracture. And if you look at our CR images, uh, the reduction is almost there. I think maybe a millimeter step, not even that. So I'm just going to accept it and then I'm going to secure it with a K wire and then fix it in a buttress mode. So this is how it looks on our C arm. The reduction looks pretty good. So I'm just going to secure it with a K wire. Now, as I said, in fresh fractures, you don't need to do that. It will fall very easily. Now this is at least three weeks old. So that's why a bit of a struggle but in fresh fracture, it will fall with great ease without any problem. So I put a single wire and the fracture is still well held. Now the question is what is the best implant for uh, buttressing these fractures? Now there are, I know there are certain surgeons who will use a radius plate for this. I find 130 blur plate the best. It is, it molds very easily and it does the job. So in my books, if you follow me, just use a 130 blur plate. You don't want to be using DCP. You don't want to be using LCDCP. You don't want to be using distal radius plate. Just a 130 blur plate will do its job and it will do it beautifully. It's a cheap and best device. So I'm going to use a five hole plate. I'm going to put it in the back, take some CM images to ensure that it is in the center and it is in an acceptable position. And then I will put this plate in a buttress mode. So on this occasion, uh, just because I'm making this video, uh, I am fixing this uh, posterior malleolus first. I have taken AP and lateral just to ensure the plate is in good position and the pole position looks pretty good, both an AP as well as lateral. Now it's just a matter of putting uh, your screws first. So the first screw that I'll be putting will be um, the proximal screw in the 130 plate. So I'm just drilling my first hole. So I have put my first drill hole, I have measured the right screw and I'm just going to put my first screw in and that will help in reduction, further reduction as it will compress the plate and I can see here that the plate is right on the fracture and it is, I'm having a good bite so this is my first screw. So once I put the screw, I'll show you how it looks on a C-arm. So this is our first screw, uh, looks of good length. Um, I think as uh, we will put more screws, it will start compressing the fragment even more. So the second uh, screw that I will put is uh, the most uh, proximal screw and I will take the same length and then we'll start putting screw at our fracture site. So now we have put our two screws uh, in and the plate is in a buttress mode. You can leave it like that, but I always try to put a screw through the plate 
uh, through the fracture site in order to compress the fracture site even further. That's why I have used a long plate. So I'm just going to use a partial threaded screw in the metaphysial area uh, through the screw and then I will show you how it looks. So this is how it looks after putting our three screws, looks pretty good. So I'm just going to take my this wire out and then I will put one more screw um, closer uh, to the apex and then I will show you how it looks. So this is my last screw, I'm using a cortical one because this is at the level of the cortex, I was initially thinking to put a cancellous screw, but this looks pretty good. So I'm just going to put this, this is right at the apex and you could put this screw first if you want. So this is a good bite and it's just going to further reduce the fracture. So that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to take my wire off and then I will show you how it looks. So this is uh, the final picture. It looks uh, good both on AP as well as lateral. On AP our plate could be touch lateral but it looks pretty good. This is how it will look when you will use the plate in a buttress mode. So this is the end of an operation. I'm not going to show the closure here. Uh, this is how you uh, put a buttress plate using post-lateral approach in an ankle in a trimalular fracture.